All right, so uh, welcome here. It's good to see you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Robbie Holmes. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the weird career path that I took and how community influenced it kind of all the way through. Um, it started... Uh, I think so. Let's try. Hello, 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 hello. There you go. Sorry. We'll start again. Hi, I'm Robbie. Uh, thank you for coming to my session. Uh, I apparently know how to work microphones. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk a lot about uh, how my career path was heavily influenced by being part of communities. Um, it all started back in Drupal NYC. So um, I'll use my sort of career and my resume as a way to talk my way through this. So uh, this is what my career looked like across the board. I have a really weird, lots of places, lots of stops across the journey. Um, but I have a section of pre-community and then Drupal by itself and then running into the Drupal, JavaScript, Ruby, and Code and Coffee ecosystem and eventually into Civic Tech itself. So um, this is how the breakdown will look for the rest of this presentation. So before I hit communities, I had 13 years where I worked in IT. Um, some of those were for New York State and the Department of Social Services. I also worked for the Human Resources Administration uh, for the city of New York. Um, I think the thing that was really interesting was I was realizing I was getting bored working in this time period. I didn't love IT. I was just happened to be good at it, right? Um, so my, uh, my ex-wife, I had a whole conversation with her and I asked her very pointedly, do I have to keep doing this just because I'm good at it? She's like, you should find something you want to do. And that was really cool and very supportive. Um, so I started building websites for family and friends, but it started off as hand-rolling websites. Um, during the olden days, pre-podcasts, uh, web conferences would release a lot of their sessions as RSS feeds. So I was kind of being educated like by the Molly Holschwags and the Eric Myers of the world to learn about CSS and modern web development. So uh, it started off with me being pretentious about hand-rolling websites. So I literally rolled websites by hand and did a lot of them. Um, my ex and a lot of her friends, they were all in uh, theater school, so I built websites for all the actors that she was worth, and uh, even spent a couple of projects where I got paid for it. Spanish site was me and a friend of mine, Chris uh, Meany, who uh, he won us this contract and we hand created every single image here. So he designed every image, it was all image replacement across the board, but it was 100% accessible. Like literally you could, you could turn off all the JavaScript and everything would work, Every image was backed by all text. It was pretty crazy. Um, so here we are, no communities. In the time that I was trying to get out of IT, I submitted 600 applications or resumes. I got two callbacks, right? Literally, I have no college degree. I have no bachelor's degree. Um, so it's, I was basically looked over, even though I had all this crazy experience in IT, where I was running the Network Operations Center for the city of New York, I was a Citrix administrator. I, I did, you name it, I did it in the city. Uh, the city and state of New York did a really good job of if you were good at something, they would let you do it until you were just about to make it your senior level skill, and they would move you to the next thing because a fire would happen. So I was like just about senior in about five technologies. It was pretty awesome. Um, then I fumbled my way into the Drupal ecosystem. So uh, I created my Drupal.org account. Um, probably around August of 2006, so it was like Drupal 4.6 era, um, started trying to figure out what was going on because with all those hand-rolled sites, I was getting tired of being my friend's content management systems. Uh, I'm lazy, right? Like that's really what it came down to. I was like, I need to figure something out so I don't have to be the person you call when you get a new career and you want to put it on your resume. This is annoying. So I did that, went to my first Drupal meetup. Uh, that meetup was at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. There were some that happened just before that in 2006 at a bar uh, in a basement. But uh, Jacob Redding uh, was running the meetup at that time. And my first meetup had five people at it that I'm sure were there. Me, Scott Trudeau, Sam Tressler, Noel Hidalgo, and Jacob Redding. There's another person that I'm not sure who it was. It might have been the guy who owned DrupalNYC.com, um, but I'm not sure. But it was a crazy meetup to have those people be the first people I was introduced to. Um, so I created my account a long time ago, bought a book, uh, started really embracing Drupal, trying to figure, out, trying to figure this thing out. Um, what was really fun about that was uh, I was doing it all on my own, right? So I created my account. I didn't go to my first meetup until November. So I had about five months where I was sort of fumbling in the darkness, you know, um, and realized I could use some help. I could use some people that I could bounce ideas off of. Um, so I went to my first Drupal camp in New York City. This is literally the introductions of the, of the full camp. 
Um, what's awesome is I have it even closer where I look even stupider, but I couldn't be more on brand, right? Literally wearing a hoodie that says white and nerdy um, and introducing myself to the community. Um, this was like really my first coming out party with the Drupal community. Um, it was really important because in that room were a lot of people that I didn't realize were going to be in my life for a very long time. Um, but this was my first event like this. So uh, on the second day, I actually launched a website sitting in this room by myself. When we get to Drupal Camp NYC3, that becomes ironic and cool because I ended up launching a site the same day, but in a very different room. Um, so these are people that I met uh, that were extremely influential in my career, right? Um, Sam Tressel is on the left. Sam and I have been friends a very long time. Uh, Sam has been involved in so many amazing things. He was at Advomatic at the time, and uh, I got a chance to work with him when I was at Sagat and a couple of other places. But Sam, an amazing human uh, who is basically an urban cowboy. Uh, I love Sam, he's the best. Uh, on the right is Susie Arnold. Susie is the person who probably changed my career and my life the most, um, but it was the support of Jacob in that very first meetup where he told me, uh, you should keep trying to do this. And then Sam Tressler and I walk into the train together saying, you know enough about Drupal that you can consult. You should start getting paid for it. But Susie was the person who changed my career. So Susie Arnold was uh, working at Advomatic when I met her. She was part of the Drupal community in New York City and she eventually started working at Sony Music. Um, so I hand, took those hand-rolled sites and built a couple of Drupal sites on top of them. We'll get back to Susie, because Drupal Camp NYC is important. Um, and these sites are now my ex, my friend John, who is still in my life. He's my partner in crime and geek on film, my podcast. Um, but I built his first hand-rolled website, built his first Drupal site. Um, it is still up and running, and I had my own small business, Hardy Handshake, because uh, my friend who was a designer thought my brand should be sort of like a blue collar worker that you trusted. So I love the design, it's still one of my favorite things that I did for a while. So uh, this is where I was at. Now I'm a year and a half into my career uh, of playing around with Drupal and building sites, I'm starting to get paid to build sites by hand, still working for the city of New York, but I'm trying to find my way out, right? Uh, I'm also trying to find the ability to feel confident that I can do this professionally. Um, and that's where things start to change. So I continue in the Drupal community. Um, at this point, I start um, attending every monthly meetup. Uh, I become an organizer. Um, Drupal camps really take off and lots of crazy things start to happen. Um, and then uh, I end up fumbling my way into Sony Music. So this is what that timeline looks like. Uh, I helped found the Northern New Jersey Drupal meetup because I was living in Northern New Jersey. I was going to a PHP in my SQL meetup, taking that over every week or every month and driving people crazy. So decided we should make our own. Um, in my time at Sony, uh, so let's see, some craziness. Uh, we'll bounce back to Sony in a second. Uh, I was actually so ubiquitously the Drupal NYC person that I was literally the avatar that was, at, that was guiding you around the conference. <laughs> These pictures were taken at Sony Music, and uh, there were me pointing in every direction around Polytechnic University. So there was literally me, they took every angle I could point. Um, eventually, organizing stuff on uh, Drupal NYC 8 uh, and, and 9, we were juggling the schedules from the stage uh, and 10. So in Drupal Camp NYC 3, um, I had talked to, so I uh, went to the Drupal meetup, and Sony uh, showed up at the meetup. So that was a big deal back then. We're talking Drupal 5 era, and uh, Lullabot had the contract to work on the Sony platform and support it. So I go to this meetup, and Doug Gottlieb was the boss at Sony Music, and in walks Eaton, Webchick, Nate, and Addy maybe? There's four people, I think. Uh, so I was completely intimidated. I was like, I can't talk to any of these humans. Uh, those are rock stars, and Doug literally builds websites for rock stars. This is not great. Um, so I'm way too intimidated. The next day I sent an email to Doug saying, like, I'd love to talk to you if you ever need somebody. So at Drupal Camp NYC3, uh, I told Dean this last night, um, this is the human that Doug was. He was like, I would love to chat. Uh, I was like, I'm going to Drupal Camp NYC3. And he's like, I'll come and hang out. So I'm sitting in these sessions with Doug sitting on the floor next to me, talking about Sony, about Drupal, about all these things. Unbelievable, what a great guy. Um, one of the most caring and empathetic humans I've ever interacted with. The end of that day was really fun because uh, second day I go to launch a site and Susie Arnold comes over, I'm sitting in the main conference room, and she's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm building a website. 
And she's like, come hang out with the cool kids. And she literally takes me to the hacker room, like a cowboy kicks the door open, and she yells at Sam Tressler to get me a chair. So now I'm hanging with the cool kids, right? For the first time, I'm in the hacker room, um, and that sort of changed everything. That was the group of people I ended up getting to know. That's how I became an organizer. Um, and it really did change everything. So it led to these kind of situations where I'm standing on stage. But I mean, we were running Drupal NYC and we were getting 100 plus people um, in some of those events uh, just for a monthly meetup. It was pretty amazing for a while. What year was that? Uh, Drupal NYC. No, no, when you first met and she brought you in. Uh, so that would have been 2007. Seven. Yeah. Uh, no, 2008. So 2007 was when, no, 2007. Um, yeah, she was, and she's been in my life ever since. Um, really funny story. When we get to the party later, come and talk to me about me and, and Susie. I have a lot of fun stories about her. Um, these were really great. I got a chance to help and, and really help build the community at this point. So Eric, who had been around a really long time, is, is my compatriot standing in the middle. Tom Turnbull and I, uh, partners in crime for a very long time, uh, work, work spouses. Uh, I got a chance to work with Tom at Sony Music. I went to Sony. We needed people. I convinced Tom to come down and apply. He joined us. Uh, that led to us going together to Zagat Survey. So Sony Music, it's me, it's Tom. Dave was there for a bit. Jared, a couple other amazing humans. Uh, but Andrew and Tom both decided to leave and go to Zagat Survey. So they get to Zagat Survey, and uh, they convince me that I should come and join them. So again, community has led to me getting this job at Sony, and then the people from the community that I was able to help bring into Sony brought me over to Zagat. So my interview, uh, that's the other thing. Uh, so I get a call. I don't get the job initially with Doug. Susie calls me and says, are you in the market? And I'm like, for what? And she's like, uh, I became Doug. Like, that was how she talked about it. And I was like, Doug at Sony? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, sure, what do you mean? And she's like, do you want to have coffee? So that was my interview. So that's how the community works sometimes. Like, literally, my interview to go work at Sony Music was coffee with Susie in her neighborhood. Um, and then my next job was literally uh, going to Zagat, and they had preceded me. So they were convincing the director and the CTO that they should bring me over. So my interview was literally going over for breakfast and a whiteboard session that wasn't supposed to be an interview, but their CTO is a character and convinced me to whiteboard how Sony architected our platform so he could get a sense of what I knew. And it was great. I spent an hour talking about my job, and he was like, made me an offer before I walked out the door. Um, and that was pretty amazing. So didn't do a lot of interviewing during this time um, because of the community. Um, the other thing to mention is uh, we we're running the Drupal NYC meetups at that point, and uh, we hired some fun people. So uh, Roger Lopez joined me at Sony Music. And uh, Roger is one of my absolute favorite people I've ever worked with. But I was like, Roger, you should come with me to the Drupal New York City meetup. And he's like, I don't want to hang out with newbies. I'm done. I want to get to meet the community, but I don't want to hang out with newbies. And I was like, okay. Uh, he's like, I like beer. And I was like, I like beer. So we found a Drupal NYC happy hours where we added the tagline of bring your face and uh, not your laptop and meet your next employer. So that started. And what was awesome was there was so much enterprise happening at that point that we actually had... NBC and the stock market and all these different organizations coming together at these events. So it literally was getting people hired, you know? Um, and then John Zavaki joined me at Sony Music. So uh, one of the Drupal camps, uh, Susie, it was her birthday, might have been like Drupal Camp NYC 6 or 7, and she told me that, uh, so she's my boss at Sony, she tells me for her birthday she wants a front end engineer. <laughs> so I was like, oh, you should come to Drupal Camp. And she's like, it's my birthday, not come to Drupal Camp. Uh, I was like, okay. So I go, and a lot of times we would run like a, a Drupal 101 and then a, uh, like a front end 101, 102. Um, so somebody suggested they needed a sort of theming 101. So I kicked John and was like, let's go. Uh, you're going to do that. And he was like, okay. And then uh, somebody was like, we need a theming 102. And he's like, that's scary. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, might be more technical. He's like, so you should come and hang out. So I was like, okay, cool. So John and I look like the opposite ends of a diet campaign, so it's pretty fun to put us in a room together anyway. Um, but John uh, presents the whole morning, like two hours basically helping people understand how theming works and really digging in and helping the community. So I, I text Susie, and I tell her, happy birthday, come meet John, I found you your themer. Um, so she shows up after the end of the first session. I walk up, and I'm like, John, this is Susie. Susie, this is John, happy birthday, go hire this man. 
So sent them outside to get coffee, and John came to work with us on Tuesday, um, which was pretty awesome. John then founded the Drupal, at the time, it was called the Drupal Themer Playdays um, in New York City. So he was running them out of a couple of restaurants and a couple of bars. In the end, he was the third one. He was getting an awful lot of questions about Drupal. So not just on the front end, but how to do things that needed more you know, dev knowledge. So he's like, you have to come and help me. And I was like, okay. So now third event of the month, that's uh, great. Uh, I go show up uh, after two, the next two events, John is too overwhelmed, has too much on his plate. And he's like, you're gonna have to take over the play days. And I was like, well, you can't just call them themer play days because like, I'm not a themer, bro. So we pivoted it, started calling it Drupal play days. And that allowed us to create like a break fix situation, right? Like, so if you showed up at the event and like, <laughs> and Jeff did, uh, if you go to the events and, and Dave was there the week before and was having a problem writing an altar for a form, uh, then Jeff shows up and says like, I don't know how to make a change to this form. I'd be like, you should talk to Dave because I helped Dave last week and secretly I don't now have to help people who have that problem. And we grew the community. We helped elevate a lot of people. Um, I was, I think in the end, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. I think those events probably got more people uh, educated, trained, and hired than almost anything else we did in New York. And we, we ran a lot of events. Um, that community was, that aspect of the community was really important to me. But all these continued to revolve around community, right? Like a after these events, we would often go to brunch afterwards. Uh, we would try to keep the, keep the conversation going. So I think this was at Drupal Camp NYC 10 or 11. Stephen Merrill was taking tons of photos. Uh, I saw him from across the, and he zoomed in, and this is seriously one of my favorite photos from any Drupal event I've ever been at. Um, so here, we were here in 2011. Uh, a bunch of us from New York came down. Uh, so that's Tom, uh, top in the center is me and Eric Duran and uh, Molly, and then it's me and Thomas Turnbull and uh, Eric, myself, Molly, and his cousin. So we came down and had a great time down here. This has been a conference I've always had a huge amount of affection for um, because we wanted to help support. We, were, we had all these amazing people coming down from New York because we just wanted to see Jersey succeed. Um, it was super fun. So let's talk about the summary of this, right? I landed the job at Sony. I landed the job at Zagat. Uh, that led to me uh, getting all these other aspects of my career off the ground. Um, but during that time, I also became an organizer. I helped start and found a bunch of community events. Um, and those things hopefully did for other people what was happening for me. So this is where I, I throw in. I'm a lapsed Catholic. My dad ran stuff. He, he ran, you know, 50s nights. And he ran night at the races to fund church events so that way we could have sports teams. So I spent my entire childhood helping run stuff. And now I didn't have that in my life. I found tech communities and realized this is how I was going to give back. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the fact that people did it for me. So I continued to run events for a really long time. So to move forward, Drupal and JavaScript, uh, things started to change. So uh, I landed at Google. We, we found the Angular JS New York City meetup. New York City meetup. I start doing node school stuff. Again, some more Drupal Camp NJ and a couple of more jobs. So this is what that timeline looks like. So I leave uh, Zagat. We get acquired by Google. So that's weird. You come in the side door. You don't come in the front door. Uh, if you ever have imposter syndrome, boy, let me tell you, getting acquired is a hell of a way to compound it, especially working for a company like Google. Because um, every once in a while, somebody would be like, so what's your alma mater? And I would be like, NA? And they're like, North American? And I'm like, not applicable. Like, um, very funny. Uh, so this was a crazy time. But all these came out of the, my career in community, right? So I was at Zagat Survey because of community stuff. Got acquired by Google. When I was done at Google, uh, I went to Johnson & Johnson. But the community told the boss there that they needed a Robbie type to run their team. So they used my LinkedIn profile to create a job posting. And a bunch of headhunters sent me this job. And in the interview, she admitted to me that they used my LinkedIn profile to make the job posting. So I was like, I think I'm kind of qualified. <laughs> so not really an interview when it came down to it. Um, and uh, I was there for a little bit, and then a friend of mine started a team inside of IDT Telecommunications, which is an old stodgy telecom company in New Jersey. Um, and what was crazy about that is he wanted to prove they could use modern technologies 
um, inside of a sort of monolithic .NET environment. So we built a couple of Node APIs, we built a Rails instance, and we built an Angular front end on top of that. So if you've ever traveled internationally and had to top up a phone where you buy a card and you add time to your account, um, I built a service that allowed you to do that without buying a card. So you could walk into a store and you could pay somebody 20 bucks and give them your SIM and they would basically just put your SIM into a form and add money to it without you ever having to print a card, get a number, do all those things. Um, which was really fun. It, was, it gave me a chance to really stretch and touch a lot of technologies I hadn't gotten to touch. Same thing at Google. At Google you write code in basically every language and framework that they support depending on what team you're on. So I did a lot of Angular while I was there. Um, but I joined and kept Zagat.com up and alive for a while. So my Drupal timing kind of fell off in my time at Google. So that I was falling away from the community. Um, and when I left Google, it was to rejoin the community is really what it felt like. I felt like I was disconnected. Um, when you're at Google, uh, you can get stuff released to the open source community. You can do things publicly. But you have to get it approved by the open source arm of the organization. So the first times you do that, that can take weeks or a month just to get it approved. And it's just a little chaotic. And that's not the kind of person I am. I didn't want to go through that. So when I finally decided I had had enough at Google, I went to J&J &J because they were building a platform team for all the consumer-facing websites. Um, and uh, I got outed here in 2014 that I was going to join Johnson & Johnson uh, by someone on a stage uh, during an intro. And uh, I left this event with five resumes in my hand and walked in the door at Johnson & Johnson to try to hire five technical leads or architects. And what was pretty amazing was they were like, how did you, why do you have these? And I was like, community, right? Like, I could keep pointing back, but like, people wanted to, I had not gotten a chance to work with people in the Drupal community in a long time. And I was about to lead a team. So it was an opportunity for me to bring people along who wanted to be a part of this. Um, so IDT was fun because that was my friend who I worked with at the City of New York in the Human Resources Administration. Um, so again, community, right? This is a person I worked with for like 13 years. And that person went off to found his own thing, and he, he reached out to me, and he's like, what are you up to? And I was like, J&J. &J. And he's like, how are things? And I'm like, not super happy. And he was like, come and play with me. So he had a director of engineering, and he was like, come join me, see what this guy has to say, tell me what you think he's about, and then we'll figure it out. You'll probably end up taking over. So I walked in the door, and it was being developed at Pivotal Labs, so I got a chance to really embed with the Pivotal Labs ecosystem, which was super fun, another amazing community. The Ruby New York City community ran out of that environment, so I was already pretty familiar with it, but now I got a chance to meet all the pivots, uh, and I went in and helped evaluate what was going on, and before I made it to Friday, he fired the guy and told everybody I was taking over, uh, which was exciting. Uh, I also knew I didn't want to go back to Jersey. I was living in New York at the time, so uh, I, I agreed to be the contract director of engineering for a little while. So I, they had a project that was running for about eight months. They said it would take six, it was nowhere near launchable. Um, and about four months later, I rewrote a lot of it with a couple of people and uh, we made it launch <laughs> and got it out into production into a beta and then we got it out to full, full release before I found my replacement. So I interviewed people to become me, um, which was really important. But he felt confident that I would give him someone that could take that role over. So again, community. It was, it was my time for the city that actually led me to that person. Um, so phase two is a real fun one. So. Uh, I worked at Sony Music. Sony Music used every agency under the planet to help us. Uh, Treehouse Agency were some of my closest friends because I worked side by side with them, but I also plucked and picked on them at Drupal meetups on a regular basis when we didn't have presentations. Stephen Merrill is my favorite person to make present because I know Stephen's always working on something fun and I can get him revved up before a meetup and be like, so what's going on? And in about five minutes, I'm like, we have three talks. And he'd be like, what do you, and I'm like, so in an hour, can you put together some slides and present? And he'd be like, <laughs> and if he didn't have a talk, he would come out and hang out with me with the Drupal newbies. So I was real familiar with the Cacavano boys, Mike and, and Joe, and everybody else who worked at, phase, at, at Treehouse at the time. Treehouse was occupied and merged into phase two. So there were three teams at phase two when I arrived. There was A, B, and C, and one of them was mostly Treehouse folks. So I get there, and they had also hired a bunch of people from Sony Music. Uh, so I, it was like the ugly duckling coming home. I, I walked in the door, and they had been trying to hire me for a decade anyway. Uh, it was real fun to get there. So I got a chance to work on some really cool stuff, and again, connecting communities. 
So one of my last projects there was actually uh, NBC, uh, no, NBA.com. So NBA.com was, it's a weird place. So NBA uh, actually outsources their media stuff to Turner Sports. So the first meeting I go into, there's a VP from Turner and a VP from NBA, and uh, they're basically decided they're gonna use bleeding edge technology. So it was Drupal 8, while it was still in beta, and Angular, at the time, 2, that was in beta, and uh, it was a mess. But they were having all kinds of problems, uh, and we, we were able to succeed because I was like, you guys are Turner and NBA. Have you reached out to the Angular team? And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, just reach out to your Google rep and say you want to talk to Igor and Mishka. And they were like, who's that? And I'm like, so Mishka created Angular. Igor keeps him in check and is actually an amazing developer who makes Mishka not have to talk to the public because no one should let the mad Russian talk to the public. Um, and then we get a meeting and I get on this call and literally it's Brad Green who is the product manager and Igor and a woman who wrote most of the documentation who was just coming in off of an internship who I knew. So we get on this meeting and literally Brad just goes, hey Robbie, what's going on? And like phase two and NBA and this, the Turner sports team were just like, I can't believe you know these guys. And I'm like, I had breakfast in Mountain View with Mishka to yell at him about breaking my test harness. You can't break both the code base and the way we test. That's not nice. Um, so it was really fun to get on these calls and just connect people. Like this is another community you can be a part of. Google desperately wants NBA.com to succeed and use Angular. So use that leverage. You're an important, you know? And that connected them into this weird community inside of Google, which was really fun. Um, so a bunch of us from Zagat and Sony and Google uh, actually transitioned from just being community friends and became real friends. We went on vacation together. So a bunch of us went to Lake Tahoe on the left-hand side. And then on the right is one of my favorite pictures of a random brunch that a bunch of Drupal NYC people came to. But it's not just Drupal NYC. It's when people were in town from other companies. Um, so we have Brian sitting right in the middle who was at phase two. Um, and he happened to be in town because he was working with us at Zagat. So we were able to coordinate these things and get everybody together. But at this table, you have, uh, at the time, Sony Music, uh, Treehouse, and who else is there? Uh, I think there's some NBC people there. So, uh, and also you've got John, uh, and John was a guy who bounced around. Uh, Roberts, he bounced around a bunch. <laughs> but an amazing human, uh, third from the left. Um, but it was super cool, these, these events happened. Like we made this happen because we, our community was so close that we actually were friends. Um, I got a chance to go to a bunch of weird conferences, so this was literally, I think my hashtag was like geek on the road. Uh, for a little while, and uh, got a chance to represent phase two at All Things Open, uh, which was great. So I stood, I got to stand at the table and chat with people. I went to go to DrupalCon Austin, which was uh, unbelievable, and then some other stuff that was happening internally at New York. So we had this Drupal Dev Day that was like, sort of a precursor to NiceCamp. Um, so I was at Google for a while. So these are my favorite photos from that time. It's from Noogler to uh, my last day. Um, but the picture in the middle is probably the best one. So on the day that we got acquired, uh, we walk in and uh, there's people on the floor that we don't recognize, just walking by themselves, which is not what you expect in a company like Zagat that's pretty stuffy. There's nobody walking with them. There's, so they literally are walking around and it turns out it's like an EVP at Google and a couple of other people. But they showed up with a box of t-shirts so Google is a swag company, right? Like if you, there's no company that is better swag game except for maybe GitHub. But like, it's pretty impressive their swag game. So they show up with a box of the Zagat color, exact Zagat colored t-shirts that said Zagat on the front and Google, uh, Zagat on the back and Google on the front. And there was a box of about 500 of them. And that's it, they're the only ones that exist. So at Google, you could trade swag internally at times. There were hoarders, there were people that were trying to collect them all. So I got offered like four hoodies for this t-shirt, like all kinds of crazy stuff. But I love this t-shirt because it's seriously like one of 500 that exist in the world. Um, and it's a really unique aspect of working in this space. Um, and there's Tom again, right? Tom, Sony, Zagat, Google. He, we worked together for a very long time. One of the saddest things about leaving Google was not leaving Google, it was leaving Tom. Like we had spent so much time working together that he was my default lunch date. He, we got coffee together. I could go to his desk anytime. 
Um, I don't think we worked further than about 50 feet apart for seven years. Um, it's pretty amazing. So my time at phase two, this is what you might have seen when you chatted with me. Um, I love the one on the left because I always did, uh, for a long time, I did uh, Movember uh, to support my father who had cancer. I always wanted to give back. And uh, so I would shave off my beard. And I decided to really freak out the team. So I joined phase two and I had only been there about a month. And I went into the office, completely clean shaven, white button down tie. I'm a guy who lives in shorts and a t-shirt, right? And uh, so then I changed my title from Robert, from Robbie to Robert, and I made my job title middle management. Um, there was an actual on-site happening for our product and project teams, and I walked in behind our CFO, and I just went and sat down like I was one of their salespeople, and, and Jeff almost had a heart attack. He was just like, he said, are you wearing a button down, Robbie? Like, it was pretty awesome. So I ended up taking a bunch of photos behind a podium with phase two. We'll get to podium funny games. I'm notorious. Don't let me near a podium. It's, it's dangerous. Um, so lots of fun stuff happened in this time in my career, right? Johnson Johnson, uh, Google, IDT, and eventually phase two. All these things really started and came out of community, right? Like every single one of those is in some way, shape, or form connected to that. So I move to the DMV area, so DC, Maryland, Virginia. Before I move, uh, I realized I was about to lose my communities, which are actually also my friends. So I started looking around and there was a concept at the time that was called Node School. And I love this idea because it was self-installed packages that you would run on your local machine and it would teach you the fundamentals of Node. So events would happen where you'd have people who could help if you ever got stuck. So I started looking into, uh, there were GitHub organization of Node School, and each one of the local uh, versions of it had a, a repo inside that org. And it turned out there was one guy who had ownership of it. He is good at branding and used the exact same name on his Twitter account. So I started DMing him to ask him about Node School events and if they were running them before I moved there. So I moved on a Friday. Um, I moved to, on a Friday, and on a Monday, uh, I went to Nova Node, so Northern Virginia Node Meetup. Uh, I walk in, and somebody goes, hey, I, I haven't seen you here before. Are you new? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, did you move here? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, from where? And I was like, New York. And they were like, are you that guy that's bugging Josh to run Node School events? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, we're having an unconference in three weeks. Do you want to run a Node School? And I was like, yeah. So this is what happens. All you have to do is step up and say, yeah, and people will let you uh, run things. Uh, and also if you're me, because you're way too loved by your parents and you're a caricature. Um, so what's amazing is I get there, three days later I'm now becoming an organizer. I'm given the reins to Nova Node uh, within a month, I'm an organizer. Uh, there was also a Node DC, which was the only definition and distinction was that they were across the river from one another, which is silly. So I decided I'm gonna target Node DC and figure out if I can get ownership and organization rights over there and then talk about bringing these two together. So I did a lot of that kind of stuff. But one thing that was cool and new to me was this idea of code and coffees. It felt a lot like the play days that I used to run back in the day. So Nova, uh, Northern Virginia, had a code and coffee event that they started and founded. And that event sort of is this like logical like grandfather to all these other events. So Alexandria got started, and that's the town I lived in, and it was defunct. The person who founded it had moved out of the area. So I helped shake that up and ask around and figure out what's going on. And one of the guys who wanted to kickstart it again said, we need a space. And I was like, I am a director at phase two. Come on down. We got space. Um, and to Jeff and everybody at phase two's credit, they were willing for me to do anything. Um, so we got that back off the ground, and then we were running it for about a year, and a bunch of people wanted to found one in D.C., so we found some venues and a couple of other organizers and me and two of the organizers from Alexandria went over and helped found DC Code and Coffee. So now I have four months, four events a month I'm running and all my Node stuff, it's lots of weekends given up. Uh, but cool, so the Node School crew, we finally got up and running and uh, jo uh, Jason, who was the one running the Baltimore Node School, I met him at a conference in New York and we went and, and crashed Node School Baltimore. So DC went to support, and I actually took over the door to let people in. They gave me a badge to badge people in. I'm like, you people don't know me, but like, this is cool. Um, but we actually went and supported, and we did a whole bunch of fun stuff with them. Um, in Node, we, we did Nodebots days, where we actually got sponsorship, and they sent us uh, packages. So 
again, all this is just community stuff, right? Like running events to try to help people to use Node to play with real world stuff. Um, and then I got a chance to be a part of something called Ruby for Good. So nonprofits uh, would present things that they could use help with, and then we would go and crash from Thursday through Sunday, um, and it was really uh, pretty awesome for us to get a chance to build stuff together. So um, this is where the Ruby community really picked up for me. I, I was part of it in New York a little bit, but in the, the Node area, the, the DMV area, there were two Ruby communities, uh, Arlington and DC, and they were both amazing. Um, I took a bunch of us DC Tech folks up to New York. We went to Empire Conf. So took DC Tech on the road, right? All these communities I was part of. I got a chance to MC a couple of events in, in DC uh, around NationJS. This is because I was basically the person who wanted to make sure this conference had a connection to the JavaScript community in DC. The person who was running it was a random person who ran conferences. And I was like, can I, can I help? Can we, can we connect to the community? So I actually got people to come out and be a part of it who were at all these events. Um, so that was lots of changes, lots of things happening. I got a chance to be a lot of, a lot of communities. Um, then we're going to head to civic tech and all that fun stuff. So I, I'm at phase two. I read a blog post by Mikey Dickerson about healthcare.gov. And healthcare.gov is, uh, they, they're writing this article about it. And it's like, so how do you know that healthcare.gov is down? He's like, we turn on CNN. And if we're getting yelled at, we know it's down. <laughs> so Mikey is like one of the early SREs at Google. He actually wrote like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs for web applications. And it's a big deal at Google. And Mikey said, we know how to monitor things. So like, let's get monitoring in place. And they didn't understand it. And he's like, monitoring is, is knowledge. The, the president's going to call the secretary and say, healthcare.gov is down. You know what's better? Is that the secretary can say like, I know, we're working on it. So then you can look at logs, and then you can build out metrics, and we can figure out why things are blowing up. So I applied for healthcare.gov uh, to USDS because I read this article and felt like I could use my skills to help America. But what I didn't realize is I was joining USDS, which is this crazy fraternity or sorority of the most EQ forward technologists, product people, and designers that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, so my Rolodex is now full of these crazy people. Um, and I left and joined a digital services company that is called Pluribus Digital that is part of the Digital Services Coalition. So USDS wrote a playbook for how to deliver good digital services to government. The Digital Services Coalition adopted that and, and basically is an organization of companies that use that playbook as the way they run their businesses. So I became a VP of product development for one of those companies. And then eventually fumbled into Holmes Consulting Group. So I bought a house in Manassas in Prince William County. And on a Monday night, I looked, because my wife was a Deputy Assistant Secretary of Treasury, I was like, let's see if there's a job for you in local government, sorted by salary. The top salary was Director of Engineering. And I was like, nah. And Thursday, which was the closing day, after a couple glasses of wine, I submitted my resume to see what would happen. And of course I got called. So I got over there and it turned out it was faster for me to go in as a contractor than it was to become a full-time employee, which then they were like, would you like to go through one of our companies or do you have one of your own? And then after about 10 minutes of Googling, I submitted an application to get my EIN number and I was in their system in a week and I had my own business. Um, so we continued to run technology events all throughout this time. We did them remotely when we had to, and then recently we actually went to Amazon's HQ2 and ran our first in-person Alexandria Code and Coffee. So this is really cool. We kept the community alive through the pandemic. We had people connecting. We probably averaged about eight to 10 people most weeks. People kept coming. At one point we had 28 people in one of these remote sessions. It's pretty awesome. While I was at USDS, I got to represent USDS and government tech at conferences. So I was sitting in this conference with a bunch of people from NASA and a couple of other crazy places. Uh, but it was super fun to represent and be a part of this community. I also took USDS to Drupal. Uh, we went to Nashville and got a chance to represent and pay for a table and introduce people to what good government looked like. Um, got a chance to work at a bunch of different government agencies. But all this came out of community stuff, right? Like I, I put myself in a position when I was at USDS, I was working at the Department of Veterans Affairs and realized I wanted to be able to do more so I moved to our headquarters team so I could pivot around and go to do other things if needed. So that allowed me to go to DOJ, where I got a chance to work on 88.gov and run into people from Acquia when I walked in the door and, and had the community connection there. 
they were worried about us being involved because they thought we were troublemakers. And then meanwhile, I walk in the door and I'm talking to somebody like I've known for a long time. Uh, and they're like, how do you know one another? And I was like, the Drupal community. Like, again, community keeps showing up. I got a chance to be a part of cool community. Got a chance to do really cool things at fa when I was at USDS. I bowled, I, I don't know if you know this, there's a bowling alley at the White House campus in the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. Uh, if you have friends who work in government, this is a fun one. Um, I went to a really secret place that I'm probably not allowed to talk about, but we did it as a group. We had an offsite at Camp David, and it's pretty amazing. Um, got a chance to uh, take people I cared about to really cool places. So I led a lot of tours at the West Wing. Um, but this is the most special one. I got a chance to take my mother, my brother, and my wife together to the White House. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool. I also got a chance to hear the president speak um, in person. Um, and that was pretty cool. So this is the USDS. Uh, right at the end of the Obama administration, he wanted to meet us and talk to us. My favorite thing about this entire day was he said, I met a bunch of you type of people that said you should fail fast and fail often, and I figured it was just because you wanted to make more money. And then I brought you in here, and I saw what failing fast and failing often actually means. We were able to pivot. We were able to, So, like, he became this convert of, like, agile, iterative delivery, and he, he got it, which was really cool. Um, I worked for Pluribus Digital. This is what it looked like because it was mostly remote. I started there in March of 2020, but... Uh, I, I like to dress up. Uh, I, I had all these clothes because I was about to become a VP, so I decided to start doing fancy Fridays. So that's what you got on the bottom right. Uh, I'm a guy who likes a tie and a shirt and has a couple of thumbs. Um, I, I've gotten a chance to join and become a board member um, at Hutch Studio. So this is an organization that helps um, up-and-coming entrepreneurs of color make their way into the digital service delivery space. So I've gotten to help shape this organization and mentor a bunch of companies. Um, again, community. This is all civic tech people coming together. The board of directors and advisors is literally littered with people from the DSC companies, USDS and 18F. I also do my own community making. So we run an annual Dio de los Muertos party at my house. My wife has this crazy career. Uh, I will brag on her for a hot second. She wrote the Data Act, which is the Data Transparency and Government Act. And then she went to Treasury to execute it. She became a Deputy Assistant Secretary of Data Transparency in Government. Her network of people is crazy. I've met a lot of weird people that I never expected to meet. My network of people is crazy. So we run this event every year for people to have tacos and get to know one another. Um, and this is a new thing that we've been doing. Also, that's my dog Max on the top left. He does not like to wear that hat but I make them do. Um, so I got a lot, a lot of things that happened in this time period in my career. Um, I mentioned podiums. I'm, don't, don't let me near a podium. I'm a menace, uh, especially the ones you're not supposed to go behind, especially the one on the left. That is the actual press pool. <laughs> you are not allowed to go up there. <laughs> but somebody was doing a remote from behind there. They left the, the, the cover away, uh, and the rope was gone. And I was like, can I uh, sneak back there? And they were like, I don't care. So I jumped behind there and took as many photos as I could get my hands on. Uh, and the other is when I actually met my, my mother-in-law. We took her to Treasury and to see the cherry blossoms. My wife was working at Treasury. And I saw this amazing podium in their space. And I was like, I need a photo behind that podium. That's pretty amazing. Um, oh, yeah, I met the president. Uh, so community led me from Drupal NYC to meeting five nerds in a basement at Manhattan Neighborhood Network to meeting the president of the United States. Um, Community is important. It changed my career, and I hopefully have changed a bunch of other people's careers as part of it. So this is me. I hope this has been fun. I'm, I'm about three minutes, I think, left. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm also happy to chat any, anywhere, anytime. Yeah? Do you think you could do it today? Repeat the question for the Yeah, so the question is, do I think I could repeat it today? Um, I think I hit the community at the time that it was growing and needed someone to like me to be a part of it. So I don't know if it would be exactly the same, but I do think any time you realize that there's a group of people that are giving their time to help and support the community, and you say, I would like to help, you, you'd be surprised how often they'll let you. Um, I, I spend a lot of time nowadays, uh, my, my job, my company, I often talk about being a consigliere or hand of the queen. Um, one of the things I try to teach new executives is um, you should really listen to people when they tell you who they are 
Um, I feel like that is no more evident than when you go to community events and somebody comes up afterwards at a bar and says like, that was awesome, how can I help? You should let those people help. Um, I did it, I constantly threw myself in front of people to say I wanna help. And I think that is really a big part of what allowed me to do this. But I also think you have to find a time uh, and be persistent. I think today it would be a little bit more than what my first inclination was. But we also had a lot of events back then, right? Like, we were running Drupal Camp NYC every six months for a while. So we were bringing the community together on a regular cadence. And then also we were running the monthly meetups. And then when I started working at Sony, we had the happy hours. And then all of a sudden the play day started. So like, we had, at some, some months, there were five Drupal events happening in the state, in, in the city itself. So um, it helped. I don't think it's impossible, but I think it was a different time, for sure. Yeah? How do you find the balance between the social yeah. and the dedicated focus to code and architect and plan? Like, when do you sleep? So how do you find the, the, the focus to be able to do the social and also the coding? Um, I wanted desperately to change careers. So my weekends, I dedicated, especially the beginning when I was still working in IT, to building projects. So a lot of nights, I would, I'd be sitting on the couch watching television, trying to build a site. And then on weekends, I would dedicate, sometimes I would say like six hours to doing a thing. Um, I was lucky I didn't have any kids. I, I, was, I was in a situation where I had that time that I could play and I had a supportive partner who was willing to let me do it. She was also busy, she's an actress, so she had her own things that she was doing on a regular basis, so it made it a little bit easier. I do find that uh, burnout is real and uh, you should acknowledge that. So. One of, the present, one of the things I didn't put in here is I got a chance to introduce Earl at Nice Camp, uh, Earl Miles. And it was a really fun one because uh, I got a chance to bring him up on stage and Earl was really instrumental in so many of our careers. But I got to introduce him and give him a few minutes to get situated. So I got a chance to go up and tap dance. But I realized when I was there, I wasn't running Nice Camp because I was burnt out. When they asked me to introduce Earl, I almost said no. Um, so I had, I had given myself that break and you should take it, right? Like, when you feel it, you should take it. At USDS, we used to say, the only people that know what the job is are the people who are sitting to your left and right. So support one another. If somebody's burnt out, ask them. If you see somebody frying, ask them if you can help. Um, I think that we don't often support community organizers the same way. We assume it's always gonna happen. So my suggestion, when I helped found DC Code and & Coffee, and I actually helped, I, I didn't bring this up, but like Atlanta founded a Code & Coffee. I talked to that person and gave them some advice. And one of the things I said was like, don't go alone, dude. Like, bring at least two other organizers. Try to have two venues, because the venue is gonna screw up and schedule something, and then you're not gonna be able to run it. You're gonna get mad. And you're not gonna be able to make it one day, because you have a kid who has to go to baseball practice. Like, bring somebody along, right? Um, and let people help. The other thing is, bring someone along who's never been there before. At USDS, we were kind of notorious for bringing someone who had never been to a meeting to a meeting. So at the DOD team, my favorite was new people who joined the USDS team at the Pentagon. Uh, someone would go to a meeting and they would just be like, have you been to this meeting before? Do you know this person? They'd be like, no, come on, let's go. And they would drag them out the door with them. Same thing can go in the community. Once you get to know people a little bit, you can say like, hey, I could really use some help, right? Um, when I was organizing those events from the stage, the, you know, the unconference style is somebody writes a title down of what they want to talk about or what they'd like to talk about. What's awesome is when you know the community, you can point to people and voluntold people to do things. Eric Duran gave a lot of presentations at Drupal Camp NYC's without him ever submitting a session because I would stand there and be like, uh, we're talking about how to make Drupal faster, time to first, hey Eric, uh, you're gonna lead the session. And I would put it on the board and write Eric's name on it. And he'd be like, uh, like now he's leading the session. Um, so try to think about how you can support one another. I think especially getting multiple coordinate, you know, people together that are both organizers. It really helps to have a team. Anyone else? This has been fun. Thank you, folks. <laughs>